Do the brakes on your Alice Chalmers tractor need repair? The brakes on this D17 Alice Chalmers behind me definitely needed to be fixed. So I'll walk you through those steps on this tutorial so that you can follow along and make the repair on your own tractor. Now on many Alice Chalmers tractors, the brakes are internal into the axle rather than an external style like you would find on many other types of tractors. So these techniques, while they will vary from model to model, would most likely apply to a letter series tractors if you're working on like a B or a CA, a WD-45 or other D series tractors. A lot of them have the same exact techniques, so it may help you even if you aren't working on a D-17 like I am. So you can see that we have uh, done some steps already in the, brake, in the brake process. We've taken the wheel off and you'll want to do the same and follow proper safety procedures so that you don't have any accidents and also the fender and then you can begin taking apart the brakes. You'll notice that there's a pin at the bottom of your housing here and that needs to come out. It goes through the housing and as well it goes through the shoe so it's going to come out hard for you. There is a access hole down here in the bottom and we use that hole to use a torch to cut that pin in order to get it off. You can see that it came off in a couple pieces. It's okay to cut that because you can buy a replacement one and here's the one from Steiner that we're going to be putting in the tractor when we reassemble. So once you get that pin out, then it will free up the rest of the parts to come apart. With the pin out, now you can pull out part of the brake actuator that will free up more space in the brake assembly so that you have a little bit more room to give. This is the part that we're going to pull out. So I'll show it to you how it sits in there. This hole down here matches up with the hole right here. There's a snap ring in there that you'll need to remove. And then you leave the yoke part of it still into the tractor. You only remove that snap ring and then this will pull right out. You can see that we still have the rest of the actuator right here still on the tractor. At this point, we can remove the shoes from the tractor. Now up here, there is a clevis that looks like this one, which you'll need to remove and it's associated with the pins here. I was not able to get my pin out. You can see that it's still on there. Uh, the manual suggests removing the rear shoe first and then the uh, front one, so those will pull out one at a time. They'll come out. Now, you may think that there would be an easier route by just pulling this part of the axle right off. However, with the shoes on, they go over the drum and it keeps, it works as a retainer to keep the drum inside the housing. So you have to get the shoes off first before you can remove the rest of the axle housing here. You can see that we have a cherry picker hooked up so that we can safely hold the axle off, hold the axle while we remove it from the tractor. We have all of these bolts freed up and then it will easily pull right apart. You can see that our drum has been torched off. We did that to make the shoes come off easily. When we were uh, removing the pin off of the bottom, we bent the shoes in and so the shoes wouldn't just very easily pull right out. So with this inside the tractor, we took a torch and made that narrower so that the shoes could come off of it. A manual suggests that you break it in order to get it off and you know we figured that torching would be easier even though torching isn't always the easy thing but that's what we had to do in order to get the shoes and the drum all out of the tractor. I'd like to give you a tip and a little bit more insight in regards to this anchor pin that's at the bottom of your tractor. This will likely be the hardest part of your brake job, so and it's something that you do right at the beginning, but you can get it out, so stick with it. You can see that the anchor pin goes through here and reaches all the way to the back of the uh, housing here. We made a driver tool just with a bolt here so that we could drive the pin and then cut it and drive it a little bit more and cut it and probably moved about an inch at a time until that whole pin was removed piece by piece. We just removed the drum from the axle and oh, was it challenging. You'll see in the following clips that we first tried to use a, a port of power wedge that would drive it apart and that wasn't successful for us. We heated it up and then we ended up cutting it slightly with a torch to try to um, ease it up so that there was more give. And finally, the drum did come off of the axle. We probably have half an hour with the torch invested into getting the drum off of the axle and I would imagine that you will probably have a very similar challenge getting your drum off too. So you can watch some of the techniques that we used and you can come up with your own too if you please and uh, get that drum off of your axle. Stand on it,
making progress. You can put your new drum back onto the axle shaft in the same manner that you took it off in by heating it up. We had to heat ours up so it was orange all the way around here and then we were able to slide the drum on. Now do remember that there is a key in here that you'll need to get lined up and then when you're putting the drum on, don't use a hammer directly onto the axle shaft because you don't want to do any damage to the splines that are here. We used uh, just a sleeve like this one that would fit over here and then we could beat on this part and it protected all of the components that we'll put back into the tractor and you'd want to do something similar as well. It doesn't have to be this, this is just a scrap we had that we could use for that task. So once your drum is on, then you can put it back into the tractor. Before you put it back in, make sure that you didn't damage the seal that's inside of here at all. If you damage your seal, then you don't want to put it back that way. So be careful when you take it out that you don't damage that seal. Additionally, we completely cleaned out that cavity. There was a lot of garbage inside the cavity. It looked like a rat's mouse or mouse nest or something in there. So we cleaned that all out and now we're ready to put it back in. You can see that our whole axle assembly here is hooked up to the tractor. Before we put the uh, end of the shaft into the base of the tractor, we did put a little bit of grease on those splines at the end, which goes into the pinion. A little bit of grease is not going to hurt the pinion and it makes it slide in so much easier. So you might want to do the same yourself. Uh, we slide it in. You can see that the lever is still intact here, the one that's closest to the tractor and it's connected to uh, control the brake pedal. We'll put the other one for the other side in the tractor as the process goes on, but this one needs to be in now. The drum's in there completely, of course, and then we did up all the bolts. Now that it's secure, we're ready to take this cherry picker off. At this point, you'll want to replace the brake pads on your shoes. Now, in order to get the old pads off, you just need to use a grinder to shave off of the rivets, all of them on this side, and then your pad will come out and then you can put a new brake pad in. Before you put the brake pad in, you want to do some inspection to your shoe. Now when you removed your shoe from the tractor, these tabs may have got bent when you had it heated up or you were beating on it, so you'll want to straighten those back out before putting them in the tractor. Additionally, make sure that both of your pins will slide through there easily, and if they don't, then you'd want to uh, maybe grind out the holes a little bit more, both the anchor pin at the bottom and this pin as well at the top. You want to make sure that they slide through there easily so you don't have complications further down in the repair. Now you're ready to put the new pad onto your shoe and you want to make sure that your hands are clean and not greasy when you're touching the pad because you don't want to get any uh, grease onto the pads. And then you can see you can line up the holes and then you use a rivet to go in. These are directional so I'm going to take the uh, side with the flat side and put those in there and you can tell on the pad that there's a little bit of a recessed area that your rivet is going to fall into. Let me set this down and push it in there. It doesn't want to go all the way. You take it out. Now I think I have it stuck. Okay, let's try to set it on the vise here. You can just see that I have a punch secured there so it will push out. And it won't. Okay, I'm gonna get a new rivet here. Try the next one down. Gonna get it lined up. There, that one recessed in nicely. I'm gonna set it on there. You can see that the punch is holding it. And I put some safety glasses on. Then I just have this uh, little guide rivet tool here and a hammer. And we'll just tap that down. This is what it will look like when you're finished. You can see all along there. The rivets are in there and it's holding the pad into the shoe. You can see that we're going to drop the lever down right there and then I'm going to push it up a little bit and it will slide right over it. There we go. You can see that it's in place there and it's hooked onto the foot pedal. At this point we're ready to put our shoes into the tractor. Before you do so you want to make sure that the shoes are straight. You may have bent them when you're pulling them out of the tractor. So make sure that they're aligned properly. And it's also a good idea to make sure that your pin slides through there easily. You'll want to do that on both of the shoes. Then you can put the pin in at the top and you can see that I have the, uh, the small keys to hold the pin in. There's some clearance. You can see that it hangs out on either side. This part is what's going to latch around the bottom portion of the lever. There's like that U in the lever that's going to connect right there. 
on the other one, you can put your uh, turnbuckle in there. You can see how I have my turnbuckle fastened. And once those are all set up, we're ready to drop them into the tractor. This is the back shoe, which will drop in first. You can see that both of my levers are here in the uh, tractor. So that drops down and it slides between the levers and then it just drops down. I'm gonna move it back. Oops, and it's way down there. It's okay, we can pull it back up. And then our front one will go in. Again, this one goes between the levers. And this one's a little harder to maneuver in. There we go. And so we'll position them and then we'll get the pin down in the bottom. At this point, we're gonna fasten up the top before we move to the bottom. So we're gonna put this turnbuckle through the pin and you can push that up in there. You can see that I already have my clip on the back lever. And then we'll, you don't wanna tighten this all the way up right now. And then we can put our next lever over. And then there's just a clip like this, just like what you took off that you'll put back on there to secure it. I do have a bungee cord connected to uh, my brake pedal that helps hold this lever in place while we're working on it. Bottom, here's what the anchor pin looks like. You can uh, fish it through. There's an access hole down here that you can look through. You probably have to stick your finger in there. Try not to get your fingers pinched and move the shoes up and down till you get that pin all the way drove through. Once it's drove through like mine is, then you can just put this safety here to hold it and uh, bolt it in. You'll want to place your springs in both ends of the uh, tractor here. You can see that there's a larger end and a smaller end. The smaller end will go in through the hole and then the large end will stay clipped. You can see how it's uh, grabbing around the outside of the tractor there. So you can push your spring in and then insert it and you do that on both ends. We do use replacement springs here. I just had this old one to show because I got my new one in there. I don't want to take it back out. But that's the new spring goes inside there. Next, you'll want to make your brake adjustment, which is done with this uh, nut up on top of here. You'll want two inches of free play from your pedal between uh, being in up position and then pressing your pedal all the way down. So make that adjustment with this nut. I'm putting the cover on my tractor so that our brake job can be complete. Of course, we'll put the fender and the wheel back on, and then we'll be ready to take this tractor back out and work with it. Now, when you are considering doing a brake job on your Alice Chalmers tractor, it's really challenging. It's probably the hardest tractor brake job that I would ever attempt. You'll need to carefully consider if it's a task that you actually want to do yourself. You absolutely will need to have heat and a lot of mechanical ability to make it happen. However, if you have the right shop tools and if you're mechanically inclined, you can definitely tackle it yourself by following the steps in this video. Stick with it. You can do it.